So welcome everyone. Today we're working with legs and feet. This is our first class of this 10 week series for the winter. And when we work with legs and feet, uh, we also work with grounding. Just gonna add one more light. All right, I think we're good. Okay, so just find your Tadasana um, in terms of props today. We did mention in the check-in that you could use uh, Joya toes, uh, stretching of the toes and feet through that prop. Um, have some sort of belt available. Uh, we will be using this for uh, strengthening the legs and around the knees. And if you have, um, any blocks, uh, soft block, hard block, or uh, a small cushion, we might be using those. If you know that you need a chair for forward bends because of blood pressure, not bringing the head below the heart, please uh, get that ready for yourself as well. Um, wall space can also be helpful. Thank you. So finding your Tadasana, your spot, and just start by bending your knees and feeling your feet. And then straightening your legs, and then bending your knees, taking your feet, straightening your legs. Just keep this going as you exhale, bend and roll a little bit forward. And add a little bit of neck and shoulders today because of all of our Zoom computer lives these days. Exhale, release a little bit like a cat cow. When you do that exhale, feel your feet. Notice if you're waiting more on one foot versus the other. Inhale, open. And keep this going. You can have that Ujjayi Pranayama. Every time you exhale, feel the bottoms of the feet, the knees tracking around the second toes. You inhale, feeling the upper back, neck and shoulders. And bring your hands to your belly. Today we're going to do our intention working in this lower area. And if you like, you can bring one hand to the heart to link that lower intelligence with your heart center. And just make an intention linked to grounding, letting go, getting out of your head, into your body, into your feet. And like any living being, the ground is our foundation for flourishing and flowering and perhaps moving into a spiritual awakening. When you're ready, release that and bring your feet together if that's comfortable. You can put a block between your legs if you like. So if you want to do that, this is just to bring awareness to your inner thighs. This is also working with strengthening the hips. But it also can just help bring awareness to the feet. So this could be a block or a small pillow. 
And just adjust your feet, the width, until it feels comfortable for your knees. Just notice the effect of that. And when you're ready, inhale, coming up a little bit or a lot, depending on your neck and shoulders with your arms. Next up, let's come through the center and bend the knees and bow the head to the heart and feel those feet again. Inhale, coming up. You can come any height with your arms, depending on your neck and shoulders today. And exhale, release. Now for balance, I was looking straight ahead, but that can be a little challenging. So gazing slightly down. This is always an interesting one. Every day is different. So today I'm like, oh, wow, that balance is a little challenge today. So some days are just like that, this first pose of the day. We you know the balancing poses are good for building core strength, but they also bring stability, strength to the mind. And if you want more challenge, more stiram, as we say in Sanskrit, more challenge, you can stay and breathe at the top. When you're ready, release that. Release that block. I want you to grab your belt. You can use, you know, a um, Terra band, something like that. Scarf. And if you have this available, just tying your ankles together. You could also have a block between your legs, but um, I personally find it hard to have both props, so I might want to just use one. And we're going to do that Tadasana again but use the belt and you're pressing out into the belt. It's particularly helpful for strengthening the ankles. If you've got one foot that doesn't work quite as well as the other one due to maybe an injury in the past, that strong side will help support the weaker side. I'm doing that flossing of the upper back, neck and shoulders, as well as through the legs, bending and releasing at the end of the exhale. And this is also a dynamic stretch for the calves, this up and down movement. And the feet, strengthening the feet. And you can stay at the top if you like after doing that around four to six times. Now your arms, you can adjust them according to your shoulders. So you can have the hands on top of the head, on top of the shoulders, out to the side, any height to help you with balance. You could interlock the fingers. You could fold at the elbows. That can be helpful for shoulder injuries. And then when you're ready, you're going to release. 
And hopefully you're feeling your feet a bit after all of that. We're just gonna do the next one for the neck and shoulders. Inhale, arms coming up. Cap your arms in any position, so palms together, interlock, opposite elbows, hands on top of the head, shoulders, or side. I'm gonna do interlocking, um, holding opposite elbows. Exhale, I want you to drop those shoulders down. You've got one shoulder is a bit sticky. See if you can focus your mind on that. Then we're gonna to go to the side. Inhale, center. We're staying one breath on the side. If you wanna challenge yourself, you could go up and down on the toes doing this. I'll show that the next round which again is very strengthening for the ankles, exhale release. So I'll show that if you want to try that add-on, it's quite challenging. And I come down the end of the second exhale. Center. Excess side. I try to stay up here. And exhale down. And exhale, release. So we're gonna do that one more time, either up on the toes or not. And exhale, release. And hopefully you are feeling your feet even more as well as your neck and shoulders. Release that belt, you've got that on your ankles. And we're just gonna do a little bit more neck and shoulder work before uh, we move into some balancing poses. I'm gonna integrate this with the legs and feet and into the hips as well. So I'm holding the belt like this. You can choose uh, different ways to do this. You can put it on your wrists. Uh, you could put it just below the elbows. So choose your medicine, whatever feels good for you. And we're gonna raise the arms up and down as we bend the knees. So I'll show you side view here. So yeah, the tail over there, good. Inhale up. And I'm pressing into the belt and if you add a little bend of the elbows, you might be able to get into a sticky shoulder and picking a height that works for you, for your neck and shoulders. So for a lot of us, it would be more like here versus here. So I'm gonna go around there for myself today and exhale, release. And we're gonna do that nod up and down. Inhale. Looking straight forward, or maybe nodding up, just being careful if you've got RA about the nodding up piece, can be contraindicated. Talk to your doctor about that. I'm adding a little bend of the elbows and I'm putting my attention myself on one of my shoulders that's a little bit sticky, it's got an old injury. Um, one of the things I've been really noticing 
post 45 is all those old injuries you're like oh there they are <laughs> things maybe that you knew about in your body but didn't really bother you they tend to creep up a little bit try with your arms straighter and see the difference probably a little less muscular Maybe harder, maybe easier. You might not be able to go as high, keeping your shoulders in place. And you're probably feeling your feet as well because we're bending the knees every time we do that exhale. And release. Okay, so you should be pretty warmed up. You this whole area, we're gonna move more into the legs now. Probably feeling the feet quite a bit after all this. We're gonna do our balancing uh, poses. So inhale, arms coming front. Exhale, balancing on one leg and bringing the other one up as you bring your hands down by your sides. Inhale, standing on both feet. Exhale, coming to the other side. So I'm gonna point my toe as I come up and I'm gonna flex as I come down. And you might see that I'm really on one leg and then I come onto both. This bilateral movement is also, it's said, helpful for balancing the nervous system. Very soothing for the nervous system, moving side to side rhythmically, bilaterally. And after you've done around six rounds, left, right, or right, left. Just finding your samastiti, even standing pose, samastiti, even standing on both legs. And feeling your legs and feet. You might be noticing one foot a bit more than the other. Might be your side that's a little weaker. That weakness might run all the way up your body or it might change sides when you get to the middle of your body. It might go to the other side. So just notice that for yourself. On the left side in subtle anatomy of yoga is the more receptive side of the body. So gentler energy. The energy of the moon receives the light of the sun. And the right side is the more active side. Like the sun shines out. So notice which side of your body is the one that's stronger and which side is the one that's weaker. And does that relate to those adjectives at all, those qualities of receptive and active energy? Just notice if that is true for you. And if it's not, just remain curious. Might be true for someone else like every idea that has ever been had. Inhale, arms side and to your height. So again, don't go beyond your height. You can play with stretching the fingers out to add a bit more tension to the upper back, neck and shoulders, if that's your focus today. And exhale, balancing on one side 
and bringing your leg up. And when you do this for now, we're not gonna go to the side. We will play with that later to work with the core a bit. Inhale, coming up. So I've been playing with that a bit in my practice. For now, just staying straight up and really standing on that leg. And I'm flexing as I come in and I'm pointing as I go out. This is exhale and inhale. So I'm coming to any height that feels good. So if you need more help, you could just bring your leg to the side. If balance is a little more challenging for you, you just bring your leg to the side and keeping your toe on the ground, or if you can, can you lift up and really go on to that other leg? So now we're working a lot with strength, not so much flexibility right now, more strength. So in yoga, we work with strength stidham and flexibility sukham. And this is how we bring balance to the mind and body and this balance, this ananta. It's the foundation of the yogic experience of awakening. You need that foundation before you go further. Because you start having spiritual experiences when you're not in body, that can be quite dangerous for the nervous system and for your personality. It's one of the great gifts of the eight limbs of yoga is it recognizes that. And just finishing up when you think you've done a round, six rounds, maybe a bit more. Just find your samastiti. And you might start noticing that if there's a side of your body that doesn't work as well as the other, you're starting to feel it wake up now. So for me, I always start to feel my left foot around now in the practice. And I'm like, oh, and I can feel my left leg starting to fire up. And it's like, oh, it's a very satisfying feeling of balance. And then the left nostril, I'm getting more air through that whole side. So notice if you can feel those subtle things. We're gonna to go to the back body now and play with the legs together or apart. So inhale, arms up to the front to any height that works for you, okay? So it doesn't have to be all the way. Exhale, coming forward. Now you could bring your hands to a wall or a chair here or bring your hands by your side. You could go just to here or maybe you go further down and try to keep your hips even. Inhale, you just come up without your arms at your arms at the end. So that's definitely easier. Or exhale, you can keep your arms here quite a long time then down at the end. And then to make it harder, inhale, arms in line with the ears and coming up. And just keep going side to side. So pick your medicine. Or gradually moving your arms up and down, which is usually where I go eventually. Just more classical way. And just feel that rhythmic movement. This is definitely working with your core strength a lot. As soon as you move away from that center point, your core has to activate. So I don't do sit-ups so much in my life, but I do a lot of this. And then when I do a fitness class, I'm always amazed how strong my core is. And it's like, oh, it's all that kind of moving off my center point. So yoga has kind of different ways of working 
with creating that stability, that strength, and other movement modalities. And again, your weaker side, just giving a little bit more attention with your mind. And just finishing your last round. And exhale, release. And now you should be really starting to feel both feet, some weightedness in them. So we're just gonna help with that a bit by doing some half squats, Ardha Ukatasana, but we're gonna do them on exhale. So it's gonna be more like a full squat, but we're only gonna go halfway down. So Ukatasana. Inhale, arms to the side. We're gonna do this for the neck and shoulders. And any height that feels good for you, it can be low, it can be uh, medium, it can be three quarters of the way up. There can be a rotation in the shoulders or the palms can be down or just um, thumbs up. So play with where the thumbs are according to your shoulders. Try not to flare the ribs as I tend to do. So a little more connected through the lower body by not doing that kind of move. And then exhale, I want you to hug a tree. Imagine that tree. Feel your feet connected to the roots of that tree going down into the earth. Feel your feet and inhale. Feel the branches of that tree all around you. And in yogic meditation, eventually we become one with that upon which we're meditating. So you can actually bring that tree into yourself, become that tree like Artemis, Diana, and Greek and Roman philosophy. She becomes a tree. Inhale, feel those branches all around you. And exhale, feel the trunk and the roots down into the earth. You can close your eyes to bring that bhavana in, that felt, sensed visualization. do this any speed you like it works for you and you might want to stay in that exhale position and just breathe there for a bit can you feel both feet can you visualize them as roots of a tree and when you Stay long enough, inhale, feeling the branches, the sky, perhaps the sun above you, that expansiveness, that opening of the spirit, soul, heart. Exhale, feeling the body, the trunk, the roots, the earth below. Maybe staying here. A little bit like horse stance if you've studied Qigong, Tai Chi. And last time, exhale, stay or keep it moving. Where's your weight on your feet? Is it forward? Is it back? Is it in the center? Are you on one foot more than the other? It's the little toe side of your foot in alignment. Is, are your knees pointing towards the second toe? More important, your knees aligned and then adjust your feet accordingly because there can be differences in bone structure that affect how you want to align your feet on the ground. Exhale, release. 
I'm giving sort of general cues, but you might need to adjust that for your body. Now notice how you feel. Hopefully a little bit more grounded, a little bit more rooted. And this grounding, this rootedness is part of relaxation, sukham, but it's also part of stiram strength. It's really both. When you're grounded, you're very strong. You're very stable, but you're also very relaxed, using your energy efficiently, a mind that is attentive, not tense, relaxed, not lazy. Okay, we're gonna go a little deeper now into the earth. We're gonna do a forward bend and bring the head towards those feet. Again, be careful with heart disease, uh, eye conditions. If you are not to bring your head lower than your heart, if you know that from your doctor, please do this in a way that um, you go halfway down. So you could come to a ledge like this, a countertop, a chair, hands on the seat of a chair or a table, anything like that. Okay, I'm gonna show it without that prop. I'm gonna bring my head lower than my heart. So do modify, me too. Inhale, arms coming up in front of you or to your sides if that feels better for you. And exhale, coming forward. Now when you come forward, you're rounding your spine. You're not hinging from the hips. So this is a, something that's not very well understood in yoga, so you're actually rounding now and bending the knees to protect the lower backs. The weight of the body is being held by the legs. So that's your exhale. When you inhale, you're arching the spine. So I'm gonna do it first without arms so that you can see that hinge from the hips on the inhale and exhale, I'm gonna actually show it without the arms right now, just so you can see that cat-cow movement of the back. Adding the arms, you can try sides, that's usually easier. The arms can be close to you or further away. Further away is harder, it's more weight. You could do an exhale through the center, turn on the stay. Releasing the head of the bottom so it hangs like an apple off a tree. Notice any decompression of the lower back as you do that. Inhale, strengthening the back as you arch it. Exhale, coming forward, rounding the spine. And if you want to make it harder, adding the arms as levers in front of the body. Be careful, so you can do it with bent elbows or straight arms. You could do one arm at a time too to make it easier. Stretching way up. The back arch is the inhale, the exhale is the flexion, the forward bend. The legs can be bent as you move to protect the spine. If you're stronger, you might not need that as much. So just adjust that to your body. It will tell you if you listen. Is this safe for me? Will I pay for this later if you get the sense? The answer is no. Literally back off. This time we're going to stay at the bottom. This is semi inversion. Again, you can do this with the hands on a chair or a table, countertop, and just stretch the back. If it's successful to you, maybe bring your rib cage forward on your thighs to stretch the lower back longer behind. You can feel the difference when you do that. Having the ribs lengthening along the thighs and then maybe coming forward. 
Uttanasana. Forward bend, standing forward bend. Hands can be in front of you. You can hold the big toes with your peace fingers. You can also put the palms under the balls of the feet. And just put the hands beside you. Or I like to hold my calves myself. Breath will be a little bit more shallow as your belly is compressed. See if you can lengthen it a little bit. And stay in the asana, stay. Asa means to be, try to be here. Moving into breath awareness, observing the rise and fall of the breath when you're ready. Coming up very lazily, slide your hands up the legs. Inhale, halfway up, exhale, stay. Inhale, the rest of the way up. You want to come out of those deep stretches very slowly. Let your nervous system and your body readjust. We use forward bends in yoga therapy for anxiety for grounding, relaxation. Bringing the head lower than the heart has a very dramatic effect on the nervous system, the circulatory system, via the circulatory system. Just notice if that's true for you. Hopefully you, you don't feel lightheaded if you do just take a moment to recalibrate. That can happen with low blood pressure in particular. Also with high blood pressure, that can happen. Feel your feet. Are you feeling both feet more evenly now? Bend your knees. Can you feel them even more when you bend your knees? Release the weight of your hips into your feet. All right, we're going to work on one-sided forward bends, and then we're going to move into some calf stretches from then. There, Parshva Uttanasana, one-sided forward bend. And we'll end with a forward bend again before we come to the ground today. So bringing one leg forward, always starting with the side. This is from a therapeutic pudic or a yoga chikitsa perspective, start with the side that is easiest. And it acts as a warm up for the body and the mind for the side that's a little harder for you. So whatever foot you put forward first, that's usually your easier side, your body will do that. And then your stance, the width of it depends on the size of your hips and also uh, your balance. So the wider, usually the easier, wider this way, laterally. That back foot, you can turn it out more or less according to your balance and your ankle as well. So the more you turn it in, uh, it will work the calf a bit more and the foot. So see if that's a possibility. See any tendency, some of you talked about pronation of the feet. So see if you tend to pronate in with that back foot or more out. Most of us it's in. So most of us have to try to feel the outer edge, the little toe side of the foot. If the ankle is tight, you'll feel it more. Okay, we're gonna do a forward bend. Again, you could do this with a chair, so you're coming halfway down or all the way down. Inhale, 
arms front or sides easier or no arms at all. Okay, so I'm going to show those three variations. I'm going to start with the easiest. Inhale here, exhale, just sliding the hands down, bending that front knee, bringing your belly onto that front leg, that thigh, and then is it possible to come down? Again, if you've got blood pressure issues, et cetera, you might not want to release the head down. If it's possible, release the head down. Otherwise, you can keep it up. That's another way to help with the heart and the eyes. Exhale, release. And inhale, coming up, sliding the hands up and bending the knees a little bit. So that's the easiest version. Adding a chair a little easier still. Inhale, arms side. This helps with balance a lot to have the arms to the side and it's less weight. Not bending the knee harder, bending easier. Inhale, coming up, arm side. And then the hardest version, arms front. Just pick your medicine. Tiny the movement with your breath, pausing between inhale and exhale. If you're doing around four, staying at the bottom, notice the stretch you get through that front leg might be able to make that back foot parallel now to work with the calf a bit more. And if you'd like, add a stiti. Inhale, look up. Hands still on the ground, exhale, release. Now you could have blocks under your hands as you do this as well, two hard blocks, or come up onto your fingertips so these can act as props to give you more height. Maybe just stay in the pose now and breathe. Can you move into breath awareness, just observing the rise and fall of the breath now? And just to make this a little easier, we're just going to step forward, slide up very gently, halfway, inhale, exhale, stay, inhale, up. Recalibrate for a minute in the center. This part of the practice, I'd be very surprised if you're not feeling both feet fairly evenly at this point. And you might really be noticing that side that's a little less resourced. You might be feeling it waking, waking up. We're going to do the other side. This is your harder side. So turning out back foot, stepping forward, or you could do it the other way. And the stance depends on you, round one leg length, but make it easier, make it shorter. That back foot, just noticing how much you want to turn it out. Can you feel the little toe side? You tend to pronate in towards the arch. And just inhale here, exhale, sliding down the leg. Bending that front knee, maybe releasing the head down if you don't have blood pressure issues, eye issues. Consider coming to a chair halfway, inhale coming up. You can also have blocks 
a block on each side and bring your hands to those blocks to make it easier. Next one, we're gonna inhale here with our arms to the side and exhale, release down. Maybe bring the arms all the way up. We can keep that going or exhale forward. So we're rounding the spine on the exhale and the inhale, we're arching the spine, hinging from the hips. You can do this with one arm at a time to make it a little bit easier. After you've done around four of these dynamic moving four bends, can you stay? And perhaps Toeing in with that back leg, stretching that calf a bit. If you have a twist in your spine, you can also play with bringing your hands to one side to untwist. So the scoliosis off on the left side will be a bit compressed. It can be the other side that's off on the left. So bringing the hands to the right can be helpful to Decompress. Also have one hand forward of the other to lengthen one side of the spine more than the other. And inhale, do that stitchy arching up. Exhale, release down. Or just stay in the pose. Moving into breath awareness. Just observing the rise and fall of the breath as you stay in the asana, the pose that brings you into presence. Stepping forward to come out of this in a more gentle way. If you're staying, finding both feet, sliding the hands up halfway. Exhale, stay. Inhale, up. Exhale, release. Find your samastiti. Feeling both feet and ending with a forward bend. We're just going to stay in it. You're welcome to do spinal stretch instead of a ledge or a chair. It's comfortable. Just going into your full forward bend, bringing the rib cage forward, picking a version that works for you, feet together or apart hands, you can hold the big toes, you can have your palms under the balls of your feet, you can have your hands forward beside your feet or holding your calves. And when you're ready, sitting down. And you might need to sit there a little longer. 
got some blood pressure issues, or lie down onto your back, got a wall available. You might want to put your feet on the wall and just lie down. Just find your place. You might feel better with your legs bent for your lower back. Feet wide angle the knees in, that's another option. Might feel better for you. Just take a moment to rest before we move into our supine poses to close. We're going to move into leg stretches right away because I got some room today. I've got my belt and I'm also going to have uh, my soft block. You can also have a pillow close by. Starting with your easy side, whatever that is for you. I'm going to put the belt. It's in a loop. In my case, you can hold it in a different way, just the two ends loose. Some people prefer that. I like it like this. I mean, my palms facing to the sky and then holding onto the belt, your choice. That bottom leg can be bent, as I'm showing now, or if you have the flexibility, can you straighten that leg? And you might want to be lying on a rug. You can do this also on a yoga mat, of course. You can do this in your bed. Uh, this whole last part of the class, you could a lot of it do lying on a reasonably hard bed. Just finding your comfort here. And then as you exhale, bending that knee Feeling it into the hips as well, that opposite side. And then inhale, straighten. Can you point the toes? Exhale, flex the toes, bend the knee. Get into that hip flexor of the opposite side. Inhale, extend, point. Can be really good for the lower back, this pose. We're gonna focus on the legs and feet now. So we're gonna stay in the position, point the toe, inhale, exhale, flex the toes. And can you stay with the legs straight now and get into that calf and into the fascia underneath the foot? Inhale. Point, so flex, bringing the foot towards me, but I'm keeping the hip on the ground. Just keep that subtle movement going. You could have those toe stretchers in your feet, which helps stretch the toes. 
into the ball of the foot. Keep that nerve pain in the ball of the foot. And the whole bottom of the foot. Moving into the calf and the hamstring, the hamstrings behind the thigh. Now, can you just stay in the pose now? Just stay there. Now, if you like, you might want to switch your hands, especially if you've got RA in your hands. This namaste position can be very helpful, just putting the belt on a place that feels comfortable for you. Now, can you draw that hip down? So the leg that's up, draw the hip down because it'll tend to jack up, draw it down to even out the pelvis. Now, if this is an option for you, you can also, holding onto the belt, you can bring your head up. This is to strengthen the neck, also to stimulate the thyroid. Be careful, this can be too strong for those of us with weak necks. But if you're feeling like you're ready to strengthen the front of the neck, throat area, can be helpful stimulating that thyroid, working with metabolism, but also as we age, this area tends to get a little loose. And try to strengthen it, just be mindful of any neck pain you might be having as you do that. And be staying with a hold after exhale here. The next version of the pose, if you have it, is to hold your big toes. So be mindful that that's quite a lot. You can also hold the little toes side, which I don't quite have in me today, but it's finding your medicine. So this is the classical pose, Supta Padan Gustasana. All right, we're gonna switch sides. So, Always working at your level and knowing that it changes over time. And actually, I don't actually like to use level at your ability right now because it's not really a level thing. <laughs> My yoga poses probably are not nearly as pretty as they were when I was 25, but uh, hopefully my level of yoga has progressed in 25 years. All right, so starting with that, inhale, pointing the toes and exhale, bending the knee, tracking the knee in line with that second toe. So this is working with tracking of the knees, focusing on that synovial fluid reuptake in the knee, lubricating, by moving that joint, building strength. Mainly we're working with flexibility now. Inhale, point, exhale, flex. We're working with a re-education of that joint of how to hinge safely. In a position where we don't have weight. That bottom leg again can be bent. If that feels better, you can put a bolster or a pillow under there to make it easier to relax the leg rather than holding it. This is also working with the opposite hip, the leg that's on the ground. If you've got that leg stretched, it will um, go into that hip flexor in a nice way. And when you're ready, can you stay in the position? Inhale, point, exhale. Flex the toes towards the nose and get into that calf, bottom of the foot. Inhale, point, exhale, flex. 
drawing that hip down because it will tend to go up, trying to draw it down. So you're getting into all three hamstrings behind the thigh as well. Inhale, point, exhale, flex. Inhale, the point, I'm bringing the leg away from me. Exhale, flex, drawing it towards me. Gluing that hip to the ground so it's not cheating by rotating the pelvis, which can lead to other problems. Notice this is your harder side. It might be shaking a little bit. Mine is like, oh. And um, you have something like scoliosis. You might have one side that always will be a little tighter. So in my case, that's definitely the case. This left side is always just a little tighter. So I have to work with it more in my practice to bring more balance so I don't move into pain in my body. So just being aware of those differences even if you don't have scoliosis, often that you have those differences. Can you stay in the position now and breathe? Use your breath, your exhale to down-regulate the nervous system to relax. If you are a runner, a walker, a skier, or any Thing where you're using your legs a lot. These leg stretches, do them at least once a week, but I would do them about three times a week. Every time I do a big sport like that, I will do this kind of stretch as a counter pose. If you want to take a further exhale, you can change the grip of your hands as well. So just stay there like that. Or you can add some movement, exhale, coming up. Just moving towards the classical pose, we do that, holding the big toe. Sutta Padangustasa. You can move into holding the big toe if that's successful. Please don't do this neck movement if it's hurting your neck, if you're getting any pain or tightening. This is also a core exercise. I'm remembering as I do it. And when you're ready, release. You can hold both feet with your hands or use the belt as a prop. Make your arms a little bit longer. Just see if you can bring those feet towards you a little bit, keeping the hips on the ground. Do this without the belt as well. Holding the big toes definitely easier than holding the little toe, but if you can do that, it does give better alignment to the feet. Doing this with the hands or the belt. Release into happy baby, release the lower back. Rolling on to one side and coming to a seated position. We're just gonna work with those feet we talked about earlier. Maybe you can just see me now, move back a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna sit on a cushion. Uh, you could sit on a chair as well, because it's gonna be a bit challenging. So we're just gonna stretch those toes. So can you bring one foot up and again, do this in a chair if um, 
this is going to be a little bit challenging. You can also, oh, my memory, you can say, oh yes, that's much easier. You can set out a wall. You got a wall behind you. That's way easier. And so the only hard thing about this is actually the position. Can you bring your, um, of the back, so do it in a chair if it's not working or even in, in a couch. Um, can you bring your fingers, so I'm starting with my index finger between my big toe and my second toe, and then I'm just bringing my fingers, if you can, between each toe. Oh, and this is how you stretch your toes without joya toes. My first Iyengar influence yoga teacher, Joya Irwin. She's retired now from teaching. She created the Vigyana practice. It's very popular still in the Vancouver area. And I'm stretching my hip too, so if that's too much. Don't do that. But if that's accessible, you can stretch your hip as well, crossing in a way that works. And can you move your ankle around? So this is what my Iyengar teacher, Lindsay Whalen, used to call pre-yoga. This is a preparation for full yoga. It's not, it's terribly, doesn't look like any of the classical poses, but we're just doing this as a little therapy to help us with other things. So let's just do this with mindful attention and just breath awareness, just noticing your inhale and exhale as you do it. Switching the directions. And we're going to switch legs. Okay, so if you have one hip different than the other, it would be harder on the other side. I think I'm going to remember that right now. I haven't done this one in a while myself. One of you requested it today, and I was like, oh, yes, you can do that. You might find on your harder side that it's harder to get those fingers in, which I'm now remembering. So many tools in yoga, and if you can, stretch into that hip. Let's see where I'm at today on that. Yep. Yeah. If you lean back into a wall, it can be a little easier. Okay, once you have your position, just start moving around. And you can do this when you watch TV, when you're at a Zoom meeting and no one's looking at your legs. Sometimes people just see from here up. It's one of the positives of not being in person. Sometimes you can do some other stuff. I'm also stretching the hip here. So if you're doing that version, just be mindful it's not going into your knee. And you can also do ball rolling. I'm sure all of you have had that given to you by physio at some point, ball rolling, and that often yoga teachers do bring that into their classes where you roll with a tennis ball or a golf ball under your foot and it wakes up the, the fascia, the connective tissue all through uh, the legs and um, some people say the whole chain all the way through the spine is affected. So you can roll your feet that way as well. So we're just gonna finish today rather than lying down, we're gonna finish seated if you don't mind. So a little bit different. Just find a comfortable seated position. It can be um, on the floor or feel free to sit in a chair as long as your spine is straight or if you're not comfortable, you can lie on your back if you're just feeling like you need to lie down. That's also fine. So we're just gonna do some pranayama. And we've been focusing a lot today on balance. So I think we'll do some Nadi Shodhana. So 
So when you're ready, take in one of your hands and you can just you can create beaks with your hands or if you're able to, you take the first two fingers down and the other two fingers up. It's called Mriti Mudra, it can be challenging. So um, just watch that if it's too much for you. I like to use both hands in my pranayama moving side to side. So that's another option. So I'm starting with my right arm and I put my thumb on my right nostril. I exhale through my left nostril. Inhale left. Switch sides, closing the left nostril, exhale right. Inhale right. Switch, close the right nostril, exhale left. Keep that going, or you can switch hands. That was one round. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Some details that I'll add the next round. Inhale left. Desikatra recommends half closing that left nostril. You see, you can try that if you like. A little bit of pressure on that left nostril. Exhale right again, a little bit of pressure with the thumb on that right nostril. Inhale right. Exhale left. Switch inside. One more detail. Can you keep that elbow high? So in the classical text, you'll see the danda or the staff holding the elbow high as yogis do pranayama with just their right arm for many rounds because in India they use their left hand for uh, the toilets. So they don't tend to use their left hands. I like to use both hands myself for bilateral stimulation of the brain and also not to tire my neck and shoulders. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Just keep this going or just move into Ujjayi Pranayama, both nostrils or breath awareness, observing the rise and fall of your breath. Now pick a ratio that works for you. Inhale four to 10 seconds, pause, exhale the same. And just finishing up when you're ready. Breath awareness. Just noticing the rise and fall of your breath through both nostrils. Inhale in and down. Exhale up and out. Inhale, feeling the breath move from the nostrils down to the belly extending, exhale. Belly drawing in, the breath moving up and out through the nostrils. 
Inhale in and down. Exhale up and out. Perhaps the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth. Perhaps the hands in a mudra, index thumb, index finger, thumbs together, or dhyana mudra, one palm on top of the other. Closing with Om Shanti. Namaste, thank you very much.